Witnessing a towering 50-story building crumble in less than 10 seconds, or a massive structure fall with such precision that nearby buildings remain untouched is a jaw-dropping feat of engineering. These explosive demolitions, with debris clouds stretching for miles and blasts felt from blocks away, are the result of meticulous planning, where even the smallest misstep could lead to disaster. Some of these iconic collapses required over 6,000 pounds of explosives, turning concrete giants into dust in the blink of an eye. But how exactly do engineers pull off such controlled destruction? And what risks are hidden behind these incredible spectacles? The Pontiac Silverdome, once a marvel of modern engineering, opened its doors in 1975 and quickly became a Detroit icon. This massive stadium, designed to seat over 82,000 spectators, was known for its groundbreaking air-supported fiberglass roof, the largest of its kind in North America. In its prime, the Silverdome was a stage for history, hosting monumental events like Super Bowl 16, the 1994 FIFA World Cup, and WrestleMania 3, it solidified its status as a symbol of American sports and entertainment. But as the years passed, the Silverdome's glory days faded. When the Detroit Lions relocated in 2001, the stadium's fate was sealed. Despite efforts to revive it, the structure couldn't withstand the effects of time, neglect, and Michigan's unforgiving winters. By 2013, a massive snowfall tore through its aging roof, leaving the once great stadium exposed to the elements. In 2017, demolition was scheduled, but the Silverdome had one final spectacle to offer. During the initial implosion on December 3rd, the structure, originally built at a cost of $55.7 million, refused to fall, standing defiantly as the world watched. It wasn't until a second blast the following day that the upper ring came down. Piece by piece, the Silver Dome was dismantled, bringing an end to an era of legendary moments and unforgettable events. Its demolition marked the close of a chapter in Detroit's history, clearing the way for new developments, but leaving behind memories of an iconic past. Next on the list is the dramatic demolition of the Mina Plaza Towers in Abu Dhabi, UAE, a record-breaking feat that left the world in awe. Standing at a towering 165 meters, these four high-rise blocks were a prominent part of the Zayed port skyline. In just a minute, we'll reveal how engineers used thousands of detonators to bring down a massive building in less than 10 seconds with pinpoint accuracy. But first, how would you like to watch our videos ad-free for just $2 a month? Or get access to exclusive content for $10? For $17, you can pitch topics and get your name in the credits. Join our premium community at patreon.com slash the impossible build. And if you're just here for something free, grab our U.S. military billion dollar blunders video at the impossible build.org slash billion dollar blunders. Both links are in the description below. Completed in 2015 at a cost of approximately $550 million, the complex included three residential towers and one designed for healthcare. Built on a massive podium with extensive retail and leisure facilities, the development represented a grand vision of modern living. The demolition wasn't simply about bringing down buildings. It was a massive undertaking requiring meticulous planning and precise execution. With 144 floors to be leveled, engineers relied on an advanced explosive strategy to ensure a controlled collapse. To handle the enormity of the structures, nearly 6,000 kilograms of explosives were spread across 51 floors, ensuring the buildings crumbled efficiently within a 10-second window. Safety was paramount. Authorities imposed a temporary closure of roads and markets, while thousands of detonators were programmed individually for optimal timing and impact. When the explosives were finally triggered, Mina Plaza set a world record for the tallest building demolished by explosives. 
It was a breathtaking moment that redefined urban development, clearing the way for a transformative new portside project. Next up is the iconic demolition of Hudson's department store in Detroit, a landmark that once dominated the city skyline. For decades, it was the tallest department store in the world, rising over 20 meters and housing 204,000 square meters of retail and office space. It symbolized Detroit's golden era, with more than 200 departments and a massive flagpole that crowned the building. Constructed in stages from 1911 to 1946, the structure boasted intricate architectural details with red brick, granite panels, and ironwork. Its decline, however, mirrored Detroit's struggles, and the store closed its doors in 1983. For years, the empty building loomed over downtown until the decision was made to demolish it in 1998. On October 24th at 5.45 p.m., explosive charges were set, and in a dramatic display, the towering structure collapsed into an 18-meter pile of debris within seconds. Thousands watched in awe as a massive dust cloud spread across the city, shattering windows and leaving a haunting reminder of what once was. The site was later redeveloped, but the memory of its implosion still resonates as a turning point in Detroit's transformation. Shifting our focus to the towering Red Road Flats in Glasgow, this high-rise complex was once a striking symbol of post-war urban renewal. Built between 1964 and 1969, these eight towers stood out with their steel-framed design, reaching up to 89 meters, making them the tallest residential buildings in Europe at the time. Initially, they represented hope for modern living, housing nearly 5,000 people across 28 and 31-story blocks, but their legacy became one of isolation, neglect, and urban decay. Constructed with steel frames to allow open interiors, the flats were considered cutting edge. Yet this design posed challenges, particularly in terms of fireproofing, which led to the extensive use of asbestos, a decision that would later complicate their demolition. As time passed, the flats faced various issues, from structural wear to social problems, transforming the once promising developments into a symbol of the failures of high-rise housing. Crime, poor maintenance, and social disconnection plagued the estate, leading to its condemnation in 2008. The demolition of Red Road began in stages in 2012. In 2015, six blocks were set for simultaneous implosion, but two buildings stubbornly remained partially intact, showcasing the resilience of their steel frames. This unplanned outcome delayed the clearance process, which required additional high-reach machinery to complete. Despite the demolition mishap, the area is now set for redevelopment, symbolizing yet another chapter in Glasgow's evolving skyline. This removal of Red Road Flats marks a renewed opportunity for urban revitalization in the city's northeast. Amid the ever-evolving landscape of Las Vegas, the Riviera Hotel remains a landmark story of vision, reinvention, and ultimately, demolition. Opened on April 20th, 1955, it marked a bold new era as the first high-rise hotel on the Las Vegas Strip. Boasting a nine-story design with 291 rooms, the Riviera stood as the tallest building in the city at the time, captivating visitors with its modern architecture and luxury. Yet, its beginnings were turbulent. Financial mismanagement led to bankruptcy within months of opening, setting a pattern that would recur throughout its lifetime. Constructed at a cost of $8.5 million, the project was driven by high stakes, with ambitious investors and daring designs, it was a game changer among the low-rise resorts that then defined Las Vegas. Despite its initial appeal, operational challenges arose and management changes became frequent. In 1966, a 12-story tower expansion was added, followed by further expansions over the years, reflecting both the Riviera's adaptability and its struggle to stay afloat. 
The Riviera experienced a series of ownership changes, bankruptcy filings, and strategic pivots to cater to middle-class patrons, resulting in short-term recoveries, but no lasting stability. The Riviera's demise began with the purchase of the property in 2015, marking its end as a part of a billion-dollar expansion project for the Las Vegas Convention Center. The two-phase demolition in 2016 was a spectacle in itself, mirroring the grandiose nature of the city. The iconic Monaco Tower was imploded first on June 14th amid fireworks and fanfare. Just two months later, the Monte Carlo Tower met a quieter end on April 16th, drawing fewer crowds. Today, the vacant site awaits new development, representing yet another chapter in Las Vegas' relentless quest for reinvention. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more exciting content.